you're not going to believe it. We got another code editor, another one, this time from Codium build as the first agentic IDE. The windsurf editor is the name of it free for two weeks where you can try this out. You'll be able to get access to Claude 3.5 Sonnet to be able to try all the cool agentic features out. Now, I'm just going to quickly look at the post and the landing page here that I'll show you what it looks like. We'll try and see how it actually works. What makes the Windsurf editor the first AI agentic IDE and then some flows are the way that humans are meant to work with AI flows equals agents plus copilot. The Windsurf editor is powered by an AI that can both collaborate with you like a copilot and tackle complex tasks independently like an agent. And the AI is completely in sync with you every step of the way. Here we have a nice little diagram of what a flow is. You have your agent, your co-pilot, and then in terms of the flow, I think what they're trying to illustrate here is it's really like a human in the loop type of interaction. You'll be able to put in your query and it will come back. It will say, here's your plan. You have the option to accept it or reject it. And then depending on what you do, it will send it back and forth and you go back and forth just like that flows allow the dev and ai to operate on the same state at all times creating a mind meld experience beyond just an assistant learn more about ai flows now the other thing within this is the idea of cascades cascade combines a deep code base understanding a breadth of advanced tools and real-time awareness of your actions into powerful seamless and collaborative flow it is the most powerful way to code with AIs. Full contextual awareness allows you to run Cascade on production code bases and still get relevant suggestions. This is something that a lot of coding tools out there do really well on that zero to one where you can build out a really quick application, but as soon as it starts to get complicated, it can struggle a little bit. Just targeting that, I think it's a really good area. Like we want tools that can work well on existing code bases not just these cool little sample apps, demo apps that are out there. Cascade tools encompass command suggestions and execution, as well as issue detection and debugging. In this example, they said run the project and it analyzed the project and it essentially gave you the steps to walk through it. That's pretty neat because it looks like it will be able to look at your file tree, look at the files, determine which files that you're going to need, which files to actually start your program. They mentioned you can also pick up where you left off with automatic reasoning of your explicit actions. Cascade can pick up your work where you left off. You also have multi-file editing like we have within something like Cursor Composer. And then Cascade lets you build and refine complex code bases with ease. Then there's a handful of other features, inline commands, code lenses, super complete, all of the AI settings in one place, command in the terminal, highlighted code actions, mentions in Cascade. A lot of similar features to Cursor and other IDEs that perform a similar task, but definitely some new features as well, like that agentic flows. You can get Windsurf Pro for two weeks when you download. So full feature Cascade, premium large models, unlimited access to super complete and fast autocomplete. Once you've downloaded it, this is what it's gonna look like. Just like VS Code, it's going to be familiar. You'll be able to access your extensions and all your familiar key bindings and all of that. Now, in terms of this panel here, so you can open and close it with Command L on Mac or with this little button here at the top. And then there's two different views within here. You have your right with Cascade view, and then you have this chat view. With Cascade, they say kick off a new project or make changes across your entire code base. And then there's also the chat panel where you can ask questions or request suggestions for your code base or coding in general. In terms of the model, you have access to GPT-4.0, Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, as well as Cascade Base, which is presumably one of their internal models. Now you can access at command, similar to something like you would in Cursor. If you want to select particular files, directories, or coding context, you can do that from there. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start a new Next.js project. I'm just going to say bun create next app. We'll create it locally. We'll accept everything. Now that we have the project initialized, let's just start out with a sort of simple idea. I'm just going to say, I want a very simple, but beautiful portfolio page with a YouTube GitHub, as well as blog link. Let's set this up to handle markdown blog posts and have a folder with three example posts. We'll send that in. 
And in this case, I'm going to be using Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Here it says, I'll help you create a modern minimalist portfolio page with social links, etc. First, let me check what files we currently have in our workspace. But analyze that. It was able to determine, okay, this is a Next.js project with TypeScript, Tailwind, et cetera. And then there we go. It's off to the races from there. Create first post, coding journey, tech stack. Here within our content folder, we have our markdown files. And then here we have the suggested terminal commands. I can just go and accept that and it will actually run this. So there we have our standard output. We have some errors and then it recognizes that there are some errors and we can go and accept it if we want or reject it. All right, so it added those packages and now let's update the Tailwind configuration to include typography. The other thing with this, you can see all the modifications here as well. Anything that's untracked as well for versioning. So you can help discern a little bit more than just from this panel to see what it's actually touching. Here we'll just install the React icons. Now let's create a blog page. So you can click open diff. Here we see the post.ts within the lib file. And then here we have our page itself the blog with the dynamic ID of whatever that page is. Quite a bit there. You can accept them one by one. You also have the ability where you can navigate between the different files or you can navigate between different changes. It does look pretty flexible by the looks of it. And you can also accept everything. I'll accept it all. And let's just go ahead and run. Let's open up our terminal. Let's bun dev. And then if we were to open this up, this video is brought to you by Scrimba, the innovative coding platform that brings interactive learning to life. Dive into a variety of courses from AI engineering to front end, Python, UI design, and much more. Scrimba's game changing feature is their unique Scrim screencast format, which lets you pause the lesson anytime and start directly editing the teacher's code. Their curriculum is built in collaboration with industry leaders, including Mozilla MDN. Hugging Face and Langchain and includes building application with Claude, Mistral models, and guides you on deploying projects to platforms like Cloudflare. While AI tools can assist with coding, a solid grasp of the fundamentals is essential for achieving real experience. Scrimba offers something for everyone from complete beginners to advanced developers, and about 80% of Scrimba's content is completely free. Sign up for a free account today using my link below and enjoy an extra 20% discount on their pro plans when you're ready to upgrade. I'm sure you'll love it. Here we go. I didn't ask it for something too, too challenging, right? But let's see if it actually works. So read my blog. All right, here are our blog posts. And we see the favorite tech stack coding journey as well as welcome to my blog. These are all within the markdown files, just like that. And if I click within here, there we go. That's pretty amazing with just really one prompt and a little bit of human in the loop or flows working through those questions, we have a full stack Next.js site. It doesn't look great, but again, this is one prompt, right? So let's just work on this a little bit. There's some obvious things. Let's add a nav and a footer. We'll submit that. It's going to create the nav.tsx. Let's just close a handful of things here. And then if we look within the components, we can see our nav. And it is nice that you can just open these one by one. Now, the other thing with this is you don't see it all streaming out, but that isn't really an issue. That doesn't really bother me at all. It's doing everything in quick succession, right? I don't think we'd necessarily always need to see everything streaming out. Though we have our nav, we have our footer, and it is nice we can just click through like this. We have our layout update as well. We're updating those components into the layout. They're here globally, the nav and footer. And just to look at the nav for a second, it does have the correct links as well. It has the proper context and all of that. And so it says, now let's update the page component to remove the redundant main wrapper since it's now within the layout. You can see the files that need review just like that. And the other thing to note with this is you don't need to click yes to preview the changes like you do within something like cursor. They just apply by themselves. So here we see the working copy of what we just asked for. And if we go back here, we can go to the home page and we can access the blog and it's all just working, right? This is pretty great. Like the big thing with this, like it's similar to bolt.new, right? But this is locally, right? You have complete control. It's a proprietary product. There is going to be a fee for it to be able to access the models and all of that. Right off the bat, you can see how quickly you can potentially build with something like this. Now it says you can customize the site further, update your name. We can add in the URLs and we can add in the YouTube URLs and the GitHub URLs. So let's just say add in 
developers digest. We'll just say for the name, add developers digest. And also for the home page, let's give it a unique animation and a linear gradient of black and purple. We'll submit that. And again, these aren't really complicated things that I'm asking. More questions on how it will perform navigating the directory, like creating new components, editing files, and all of that. In a moment, I'll ask it to do something a little bit more complicated as well. It made some changes. It edited the nav, the footer. It edited the global CSS and the page.tsx. Let's just go and look at this. We have developers digest, and now we have this nice little animation here. Again, it's a pretty simple page. Let's say on the home page, give me a sidebar with the latest blog posts. And for the blog post page, let's add a mechanism to tag them with particular topics. This one's a little bit more involved, right? The sidebar, not too bad, but in terms of the mechanism to tag them for particular topics, I'm going to be interested to see how it decides to do this. It's going to add the sidebar with the latest blog post to the home page and implement the tagging system for the blog post. It says, first, let's update the blog post markdown files to include tags. So now if we look within the blog post, right at the top here, we see these tags. So introduction as well as personal. I like that approach in terms of setting up the tags. Now, if I look at the posts themselves, we have lib posts. And in terms of how it's setting up that post, we see now that it's going to access the tag, which is an array of strings. So then here it's creating a sidebar of the latest post here. It's going to iterate through that. And then it's going to edit the page of where it's going to put the sidebar. And then it's making the edits of where to put the sidebar. It's creating the tag filter as well. Then it also created a tag filter. And then it's going back to the page to add that tag filter. This is really pretty amazing. Now, if we go back to this, here we go. So here are our latest posts. We have these tags. If I view them, I have all of the tags here. I have this mechanism where the tags are working. Like this is really impressive. Like the big difference here is if I was using another tool like cursor is I would be using the at command for all sorts of stuff because I find, especially in something like Next.js where it can be a relatively complicated file structure, if you don't specify like where you want things or what files to reference, sometimes it will just create new files and not really know or sort of grok that understanding fully of the context. And you sort of have to piece together those pieces. But this flows thing, like riding on this windsurf thing, it's pretty nice, right? Let's take it a little bit step further. Let's try and make it a bit harder. I'm going to say now I want a chat GP style chatbot page. Now our site has our title. All right, let's see if it can do something with an AI model. Chat messages, it made a chat messages component here. Within this, this is going to be how it has the user or the system message, depending by the looks of it. It made a component for the chat input, the typing indicator it even made a component for. Now let's add typing animations to our global.css. There are some really nice things here. So you can see what it's doing in terms of insertions, deletions. I really like that sort of Git feel where you can see what is it adding? What is it removing? Just being able to see that at a glance is actually quite nice. All right. Now, if we go back, we have our home, we have our blog. Now, if we go to chat, we have this chat box here. We have a simulated response from the API. We have those nice little icons there. And that's pretty impressive, right? It really wouldn't be that far off just to set up a simple backend. Like you could do that in 10 lines of code to stream back a response with something like Langchain, the Vercel AI SDK, or even the OpenAI SDK to set up a simple chatbot. So this really gives you a sense on what you can do. This is great. Like I am definitely going to be using this a bit more. Uh, I'll potentially try and showcase some other things that I find over the coming weeks, but I just wanted to do a bit of a review on this new windsurf tool. Kudos to the team at Codium. 